Hey everyone, the Unconventional Outdoorsman here. Sorry if I haven't posted in a while. It's been crazy. I've been working a lot, so I've been doing that. I haven't had really a lot of time to film a video, but I thought I'd film this one for y'all today. I'm at the DMV waiting to get something before it opens. I thought I'd just tell you a couple of funny fishing stories and hunting stories. So, um, back in 2010, 2011, I was just a young kid at the time. I was probably 10, 11 years old. And we were fishing in uh, Lake Tanny Comb, which is down in the southwestern part of Missouri. And my uncle came along, and we were fishing on this little John boat we had at the time. And we have those, you know, those fish baskets that you tie a string into and hang off the side of the boat. And it was hilarious. Um, my uncle Gary, he uh, he took his fish, but he undid the stringer, and um, he put the fish in there. And when he let go of the basket, the whole basket just fell to the bottom of the lake, and it was hilarious. Like he had caught like at least his limit that day probably five ten fish and it just fell all the way down to the bottom of the lake and he was so mad about that because usually when we go down there we like to keep all the trout we catch so that was pretty funny and I remember another story the time I caught my first bass actually I was uh I think four years old so that was like 2006 2005 around there um and we were on a, a lake called Mark Twain which was close to northern Missouri closer to Iowa and um I was a young guy, you know, I just, I wasn't into fishing that much. I was like more into playing with my toys and all that on the boat. My dad, uh, I was on the front of the boat with my dad. This was on a little bass tracker. And um, he he's like, Ethan, I got to go get a Gatorade. Can you hold my rod for me? I said, sure. And I'm holding his rod and he's going back in the rear of the boat and getting some, uh, some Gatorade for both of us. And then all of a sudden my rod tip just goes down. And I'm like, dad, I got a fish. And... He's like, no, you don't. And then he, Tim, my cousin who was on the boat with us, he's like, yes, he does. So my dad comes running up and starts showing me how to reel it in. And after a couple minutes, I finally got it in. And it was a pretty nice size bass for a young guy like me. I was only four at the time. I think it was like two and a half pounds. But it was just an amazing memory. Um, you know, first fish I ever caught, really, I think. So that's just something that uh, always stuck with me. And then another time, I think it was the day I caught my biggest catfish, I think. That was back in 2015. I caught a 23 pound channel cat. But earlier that afternoon, this is late May, I think it's May 31st actually of 2014, 2015 maybe, I can't remember exactly. And I'm sitting at a friend's pond in one of these neighborhoods, one of these stocked farm ponds in a little small town in here in central Missouri. And uh, I catch this big old mud cat, a yellow bullhead. And you know, I'm I'm a stupid kid, so I'm sticking my hand in its mouth trying to get the hook out. And I got the hook out, but right when I did that, and this thing was pretty good size, two, three pounds, it bit down on my thumb and literally would not let go for 15, 20 minutes. I, and I got to a point, I was just so done with it biting down on my thumb, I literally ripped it off my thumb and all my most of the skin on my thumb came off. Thank God my friend's mom was a nurse, so she wrapped it up with a bandage. And then an hour later, I went back out around sunset and caught a... 23 pound channel cat. I don't even know if I still have a picture of that. It's been so long. But um, speaking of that, I need to get back to catfishing. I've missed that. It's been a while. But funny, funny hunting stories. Let's think. Ooh. So the the first time I went deer hunting, uh, I just get, my dad bought me my first gun. It was a Remington 870 pump 20 gauge. And so it was a you know nice little gun for my time. I mean I didn't like a lot of recoil. I was like seven years old. Uh, first time I went deer hunting. So it's like 2009, 2010 around there. And we're sitting um, closer to the far side of the property that faces the road. So, for example, say the road is here. Say my arm is the road here. We're about 200 yards back, sitting in an old white chair that my grandpa put back there in the 90s. Somehow it didn't dissolve or rust away. And I'm, we're sitting there. And I'm seven years old, you know. And you always hear about buck fever. This is the perfect example of that. Right, and we're sitting there for about 30 minutes, and we see these two large doe walking up. And I and my dad, I see him with my dad. He says, wait till they get a little bit closer and shoot them. So I lined up, and I don't know how I missed it. My dad didn't know how I missed it. I aimed at that, the vital organ area, and I fired once. I was so in shock, and they start running. My dad's like, shoot them again, shoot them again. So I uh, pump back the shotgun and fire another round. And we looked and looked for a blood trail. We could never find one. So I guess I must have just gone right over the back of it. But I mean, that was probably, that's really how I got hooked into deer hunting, I think. Um, that experience, that adrenaline pumping your blood, that always felt fun. 
Then in about sophomore year of high school, this is fa flashing forward a few years. So this is what, 2017, fall of 2017. We, um, we're down on my property again, and I've got this little area of the property. It's a little meadow I had cut, I've got cut down. I'm in a little deer stand that's about, I don't know, 8 feet up, 10 feet up. I'm up there with my 30-30, and we've seen black bear prints down there before, um, but we never really thought anything of it. You know, it's like the woods. Whatever's going to live there is going to live there. <clears throat> but uh, apparently my, my cousin... Uh, he'd been telling me that the neighbor had been letting dogs loose on the property. So he said if he saw any of those, if I saw any of those, we had radios. And he said to call him up on the radio and he was going to call the game warden. Because in Missouri, it's illegal to use dogs for deer hunting, which it's a shame they even do that. And so I'm sitting there all day, didn't see anything. It was a really slow opening morning. And then around 3 p.m., I see this little black creature. It's like a, I thought it was a bear, a little bear cub. I was like, oh crap. If the cub's coming, that means it's mama's coming. And it starts coming closer. So, I mean, I'm, I I just, you know, take my gun off safety. I put the hand, I, I get, get ready to put the hammer back. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Excuse my language, but it's like, I'm waiting. I'm like, that, that ain't a bear. And I'm, it's a little, one of those little black dogs that my uncle or my cousin was talking about. And I'm like, oh my God. So, and it was a little black pit bull thing. I couldn't tell exactly what, but it looked like a pit bull though. And it comes running up to the foot of my stand. If anybody knows anything about deer hunting, deer hate the smell of canines. Um, they're one of their natural enemies, coyotes and such, foxes. Uh, I don't know if fox could take down a deer, but either way. And it comes up to the bottom of the stand. I'm like saying, shoo, get out of here. And it's, and it's literally just sitting there, wagging its tail at me, looking up for like five minutes. So I, I have, um, you know, we always carry snacks on us because we're up there for a while. So I take a little like a piece of bread or something, I throw it over. And it just runs back to where it came from. But yeah, that's probably some of the stories I can think about. I'll probably do another one of these next week. If you guys like this, please hit that subscribe button. If you have been watching the videos, uh, you probably know that, uh, well, you don't know this, but 80% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed. So do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell to all notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching.